Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor. Just wanted to tell you what I'm doing right now, just so you know. I'm setting aside, because of all the uncertainties, you got the Ukraine war, you got inflation, you got massive debts in the United States. I'm making sure that I have plenty of, even though the US dollar, in my opinion, is, is worthless from all the money printing, I learned from the 2008 financial crisis and other things that cash is king. So you, there's no way to ever predict when the actual collapse of the monetary system will happen. And so you have to assume that your cash will be king in horrible situations. So what I'm doing is making sure that I have plenty of cash and I'm making sure I accumulate gold in my Glenn account. I'm, I'm accumulating XLM right now. XRP, not right now, but I, but if I didn't have plenty of it, then I would be. Um, XRP, XLM, gold, and cash. So that's kind of what my thinking is right now. Uh, but I'm accumulating my gold through my Glint account. Glint's one of my sponsors. Uh, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but Glint Gold, it's not an ETF. Glint offers direct ownership of your gold, allocated directly to you, the owner. ETF Gold is allocated to the trustees. Start saving and spending now. Check this out. I want you to see this because this is a video that's on Glint's website. I don't think I've shown it before, but it shows you everything about this. Watch. Glint is the world's new gold currency. Glint gives you first-time access to gold and the ability to spend it instantly. The way we see it, gold is the fairest possible money. The only true money. Our global platform for gold, foreign currency exchange, and payments is independent and more reliable than a normal bank account. That's because Glint lets you buy, save, and spend gold instantly through a simple iPhone or Android app. When you fund your Glint account with U.S. dollars, you can convert them into gold whenever you wish. Then you can spend your gold or U.S. dollars instantly via your Glint MasterCard, anywhere MasterCard is accepted globally. Soon you will be able to pay bills and share funds with friends and family via the app. There are no hidden charges, and if a currency plummets or your bank overextends itself, no worries. Your gold is still yours. Securely locked in Brinks vaults in Switzerland and insured by Lloyds of London in a segregated account, independent of any government system or control, keeping your precious savings safe and secure. Register for your Glint account today. Now that is cool. All right, um, wanted to point this out. The market is uh, going up today, but I wanted to show you, this is a teachable moment, especially for you young people out there. So in crypto every year, or not just in crypto, but in a, in a lot of things, the markets in general go down as we approach the tax deadline because people are selling a lot of their investments for tax purposes and to be able to pay the taxes. And so the markets typically go down on the lead up to April 15th, which is tax day in the U S it happens every year. It's a reason it, it, if you're, if you're in a position to be a buyer, it's a, it's the, one of the best times to be accumulating is when, when it's, when you know that the market is going down for reasons other than the something being wrong in the markets or something being wrong with the investment. When you know that it's going down as a result of of just the tax deadline approaching, it's one of the best buying opportunities. So anyway, I make that I wanted to make that point to show you that now that the tax is now that the tax uh, deadline is over, now the markets are going back up, and this is pretty typical of how it works every year. Uh, crypto bull had a good tweet. XRP is still in the top four cryptocurrencies on coin market cap 16 months after the SEC came after Ripple. This clearly shows how loved and significant this coin is around the world. When the lawsuit is won, we will take the number two or number one spot beating Bitcoin and Ethereum. I've always believed that XRP's rightful place is on the throne and that throne is number one, numero uno. Now, Preston... Um, I don't know who this is. Preston, I think I thought this was Preston Byrne. Maybe I'm wrong. Anyway, he says they have known since the 2008 crisis. 
Don't I've always said on this channel that I that I felt like the 2008 financial crisis is when these governments put in motion the plan to change this economy over to a digital economy because they knew that the fiat game was up. They've known since 2008 crisis. Don't let anyone tell you different. And I don't know what he's talking about, Neil Kashkari here, but he's retweeting this a new Bretton Woods question mark from 2014. They've been planning this for decades, folks. John Deaton, unpopular opinion. Many XRP holders are totally unaware of how lucky Ripple and XRP holders are to have judges Natburn and Torres assigned to the case. There are many federal, ju federal judges accurately described as government hacks. Those judges rubber stamp whatever the government wants. Well, I'm glad that I'm glad John Deaton's involved, and I'm 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 glad that. I think he's right about that too. Okay, whistleblower alert for Gary Gensler, Hester Pearson, Allison Heron, Heron Lee, the only SEC chairs that or SEC commissioners that have Twitter handles. Stefan Huber put this out. There are 11.6 million investment contracts in building infrastructure that doesn't yet exist with promises of profit, staking rewards, which this is a security according to Gary Gensler. I don't know why he's not going after the Ethereum staking. These investors are completely dependent on efforts of others. Their Ethereum has no utility and cannot be used nor sent. By the way, folks, at the end of this video, I'm going to play you the nightmare clip for Ethereum holders. It's the night, it's the one that they should be sleeping with one eye. The Ethereum founders should be sleeping with one eye open, folks, because I've got the nightmare clip. I believe that Jay Clayton sent a message, sent two messages, well, one message. Um, okay, this was from yesterday. The Republican, the Finance Committee, Patrick McHenry and some of the others, raising concerns with the impact of recent SEC rulings on the digital asset ecosystem, including DeFi, in a public comment letter. So they're sending another letter to the SEC. Now, I think that these public comment letters, I think these letters that they send, I think these are... I don't know how Congress and all that works, but I think these are procedural letters. I think that these letters that they're they're putting these letters more or less on the record so that down the road they can, I think that part of it is down the road when Gary Gensler's, the party that put him in the, at the SEC gets in power, the, the party that did not put him in power gets up there that they can put him in front of Congress and say, we we sent you these letters and you didn't do crap, so now we're going to hold you accountable. I think part of the reason for issuing all these letters is that. Maybe all the reason. And then we've got a tweet from Jerry Brito. Look at this. Jerry Brito, who hates Ripple, by the way, and has made no, he's made, he's made it very clear that he does not represent the industry. He represents what he, what their website on Coin Center calls decentralized systems. But he gets to pick, I guess, which ones are decentralized and which ones are not. He, in conjunction with the SEC that he worked with for a long time behind the scenes leading up to the Ethereum free pass. So the decentralized systems that he and the government have decided they're going to say are decentralized, those are the ones he supports. Anyway, now he's got a problem with the SEC because I think that he realizes that Gary Gensler is in the face-saving businesses and, and might be about to try to save his own hide from all this Ethereum free pass stuff. In a recent speech, Gary Gensler said crypto exchanges should register with and be regulated by the SEC because they are probably listing securities. I addressed that idea in a new issue of my newsletter. Anyway, we'll get to the newsletter here in a sec. But I said, I think, I think someone's worried about Gary, Gens Gary Gensler's about to throw the security net around their precious Ethereum. What three, year, what, three years of fake clarity wasn't enough? Welcome to the party. Have fun watching your gas guzzler try to compete on a level playing field. And here's a snippet from his article. And this is what Gensler's doing that these guys are worried about. Right here, it says, bottom line, the proposed change would make it, make it so that the trigger for registration would no longer have to be conduct. Mere speech would suffice. That is, if you made available decentralized exchange smart contracts and people use them, you'd be considered an exchange and required to register with the SEC as a National Securities Exchange or ATS. As a result, it would be illegal to publish code unless you first 
registered with the SEC. So it sounds to me like this would interrupt the Ethereum monopoly and Jerry Brito doesn't like that. That's what it sounds like to me is that Gary Gensler is throwing a wrench in the monopoly probably to save his own hide because guys like Gary Gensler, that, that's their real business is look out for numero uno and don't step in number two. That's what guys like him are about. Guys like him, these are the guys, these are the guys that when the chips are down, they kind of slowly turn and walk away and they're not there to have your back. These aren't the guys that are that you can go into the trenches with, folks. These are people looking out for themselves. That's what's wrong. That's part of what's wrong with this country is we is there that we've got a system now where people are putting these toadies up like Gary Gensler, and their their job is to protect whoever's paying them or whatever, whoever's whoever they're beholden to is probably a better way of saying it. Okay. So Library retweeted Jerry Brito and he said they said, How's an exchange supposed to know if something is a security? How is anyone supposed to know? Only Gary Gensler and the SEC know if something's a security, and they're playing securities Calvin ball. <laughs> um, then we're moving along. So then I made Gary Gensler aware. You remember that free pass you gave Ethereum through backroom deals with with the uh, these guys? That wasn't enough. They want more. And what this is is this is one of the attorneys for consensus. We, Consensus, have submitted a comment in response to SEC's proposal to expand the definition of securities exchange to cover communication protocol systems. We encourage you to read it. So they've got a whole write-up on this. And this guy, by the way, folks, look where he was. He's a lawyer at Consensus, formerly at the DOJ, and, wait for it, Sullivan and Cromwell. Isn't that Jay Clayton's old stomping grounds? I think it is. I'm sure that's a coincidence, though, folks. Don't pay any attention to that. He says, we respectfully request the SEC clarify in any final rule that it does not cover blockchain-based networks. Short of that, the proposal would run afoul of the law of a no in a number of respects. And I said, well, I respectfully request that the S SEC clarify this which is Brad Garlinghouse and Joseph Lubin talking about how Ripple's completely transparent, but Joseph Lubin to this day has kept the disguised whales disguised. That's what I respectfully request. All right. And then there was another, there was part of his thread where he's, he's saluting coin center, Jerry Brito, Peter Falkenberg, um, and then the Blockchain Association, Kristen Smith, who runs the Blockchain Association, Jake Travinsky. Remember, these, this is the crypto. This is a crypto industry group that will not voice any opinion in support of Ripple or John Deaton and what he's doing. But apparently, they're all in. They're all. They're helping consensus. And these guys, they're they're fine with that, but they're not anywhere close to what Ripple's doing. But they're putting themselves out as this, this the blockchain association. This is for, for the crypto industry. We are in support of all of them. No, no, you're not. Until you can prove me wrong. I want you to prove me wrong. I'm begging you. Um, and then there was this seven trillion dollar Vanguard fund says goodbye to grayscale Bitcoin and Ethereum. They know the writings on the wall now too. The Lord already told everyone this in 2021. <laughs> I don't know what all that is. Anyway, so now let's get to Jay Clayton. The first thing you need to understand is that Jay Clayton is watching Twitter. Watch this. When you were uh, in the uh, chairman of the SEC position, there's all these crypto people who are always tweeting at now Gary Gensler. When you're sitting in that position, are you seeing these tweets? Are you seeing anything that happens on crypto Twitter or are you completely ignoring everything? Um, look, look you, you don't, you can't ignore everything, especially when people come up and say, Hey, you know, this one, this one's really funny. Have you seen this? You know, uh, I didn't know you looked like Homer Simpson, uh, you know, that kind of thing. But, uh, uh, you know, you, you accept that as part yeah. of one of these jobs. And look, the SEC and, and I'm, I'm, I mean, I think you heard, I'm, I'm very empathetic to whatever Gary has to do because 50 million American households are invested in the markets. It's your job to do the best you can for them. Uh, 
but you're not going to make everybody happy. That's, that's just life. And you, and you have to accept that, but doesn't mean you, doesn't mean you don't try the best you can for 66,000 plus XRP holders is to not say anything about XRP being a security for eight years, let them invest in it, then get warned by, um, Joseph Grunfest, how you're going to hurt them if you drop a lawsuit on Ripple, and then you ignore that and you sue Ripple anyway, and overnight is like I think it was 15 billion in law in losses, and that's doing your best for these people that you claim you want to protect. That's doing your best. Yeah, right. This guy had some kind of other agenda going on, and by the way, here's what he referenced. The uh, Simpsons, where there was things going around about the Simpsons and how they looked like. The best one's Gary Gensler. <laughs> he looks just like that freaking guy. Now, let's get to what I th I, a part of me thinks. Because remember, Jay Clayton is is went to One River, who's invested in Bitcoin and Ethereum. And you have to wonder if he was intentionally sending a signal to... Ethereum investors across the world because he did this publicly and listen to this. We're going to see um, similar companies not subject to the same uh, scrutiny from a enforcement point of view. And it's just a matter of jurisdiction, bandwidth and the like. There's, there's no inherent unfairness in that. It's, you know, who draws the attention? Etc. And people, people who are, um, you know, similarly situated, and one is uh, subject to uh, a regulatory action in some jurisdiction, and the other isn't. The one who isn't, you know, maybe getting a pass for the moment, doesn't mean they're going to get a pass over time. In fact, if if you see someone who is a similar situated product, you know, subject to an enforcement action, you better expect. That, that may come for you. You, you believe, are going to see. Let me tell you what I think. I think they're waiting for Ethereum to come out with 2.0. And then to cover their butts, I believe they're then going to go after the Ethereum, some of the Ethereum founders for the initial ICO. And I think it'll be some kind of BS fun just so that they can point to it and say, oh, we see we did. We, we, we did something to them. We, we always intended to do something. Meanwhile, they and their buddies and the people they're connected to and all these different companies, how much did they make by getting this three-year free pass? This is a sham, and it's always been a sham, and they never thought that we would find all this stuff, and all they had to do was give a level playing field, but they couldn't do it. They just, it just wasn't in them to do the right thing. Sickening. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button and tell your friends and family that Jay Clayton may just have intentionally given a warning siren to Ethereum investors out there. Pay attention folks.